In this video, we're going to continue looking at impact loading, but what we're going to look at in particular is the impact energy required to fracture a piece of material. Now we've got two scenarios here. Scenario A shows an object falling down a slope, so falling a distance of three meters and striking a test piece of material. And the test piece of material doesn't fail. Yes, it becomes deformed, but it's capable of absorbing all of the impact energy that's been supplied to it. In scenario B, a similar mass has fallen a distance of 8 metres, striking the test piece, and in this case the test piece has ruptured, and the object has continued moving off with a velocity V of 5.5 metres per second. Now what we want to know is how much impact energy caused this piece of material to fail. And this is relevant to a material property called toughness, where toughness is a material's ability to absorb impact loading. In scenario A, the test piece has absorbed the energy. Once again, we can see that it's been deformed, but it's still absorbed the energy. Whereas in scenario B, the test piece hasn't been capable of absorbing all of that energy. However, we will be able to calculate how much energy it took to cause the test piece to fail. So let's begin by looking at scenario A. And for scenario A, we're going to calculate the amount of impact energy that the test piece has been able to absorb. And we said in the previous video, the impact energy is going to be equal to the potential energy contained within the object before it was released, or contained within the object when it was on the slope three meters up from the end point. And the amount of potential energy in that object will be mass times gravity times height. As we said there, that's also going to equal our impact energy. Well, the mass of the object in this case is eight kilograms. Gravity is 9.81, and in scenario A, our height is 3 metres. Therefore, the impact energy in scenario A equals 235.44 joules. So we know that that test piece can absorb 235.44 joules, but what we haven't determined yet is how much more it could have absorbed. So how much energy could it actually have absorbed before it ruptured? And this is where scenario B comes in useful, because what we can see here is that our test piece hasn't absorbed all of the energy. Instead, we can see that it's absorbed some of the energy, or more accurately, some of the energy has been absorbed, causing the test piece to rupture, but the object still contains some energy. So what we can say in this case, for scenario B, is that the potential energy contained in the object at the top of the slope equals the impact energy, or the energy required to break the test piece, plus any remaining kinetic energy in the object. So we're using our conservation of energy rule. All of the energy at the start, as in the potential energy, equals all of the energy at the end, the energy absorbed to break our test piece, plus the kinetic energy remaining in the object. So we can rearrange that and the impact energy then is just the potential energy at the start minus the kinetic energy at the end. So now let's input some numbers because our impact energy then, the potential energy is mass times gravity times height and the kinetic energy is a half times the mass times the final velocity squared. So we have impact energy equals the same mass, 8, times gravity of 9.81, and this time the object started at a height of 8 metres, minus a half, times the mass again, which is 8, times the velocity squared, and our velocity is 5.5 metres per second. Now running that all through our calculators, we get an answer of 506.84. and the units there again are joules. So from carrying out this test, we've been able to observe a couple of things. We know from the first test that the piece of material was more than capable of absorbing 235.44 joules. Yes, it deformed, but it didn't rupture. We then carried out a second test where we increased the amount of energy being applied to the test piece, and we found that it did rupture, it failed, and the object that was used to damage the test piece also contained kinetic energy after the damage had occurred because it had a velocity as it moved away. 
So we did a simple energy balance. We said that the impact energy was the potential energy minus the kinetic energy that remained. And we calculated the impact energy to be 506.84. And that's the amount of impact energy that was required to rupture our test piece. And we can see there that it's roughly twice the amount of energy absorbed during the first test. And so we've accurately established the amount of impact energy that that test piece was capable of withstanding.